Hey guys, my name is Patrick. I'm an engineer at OpenNMS, and I made this little video at our Dev Jam conference. This is our yearly engineering conference, and uh, it's about the new time series integration layer, which I want to show you now. Enjoy. All right. So let's take a look how the um, implementation in OpenNMS looked so far for time series databases. So this is our OpenNMS system. Right? Then we had their different databases so far. We had um, the RDD database, a uh, type series database that was very much um, connected, interconnected with OpenNMS. It was growing inside of OpenNMS, basically. And the same for Newt's. Looked the same way. So, and this is the reason why it was very hard for us to add um, another time series database, because these days, more and more um, time series databases come in on the market. But at the same time, we it takes us a lot of time and effort to integrate them. And that's why we came up with this new idea of writing a time series integration layer. And this one looks like this. Let me put it down here. And it looks the same from the inside of um, OpenNMS. It's also growing in there everywhere. But to the outside, it has a very small interface. And let's go like this maybe. And this interface can be connected to without any knowledge of OpenNMS. So if we want to write an interface, let's make a green one. We can connect here and hook up here. And then let's say um, we can connect now to any other time series database. And if we add here, then from the open end side, it looks like a no um, time series integration with all the, the bells and whistles. Um, but from the plugin side, it's a, it's a very slim interface. When designing this interface or this integration layer, we had a few um, design principles in mind. One was zero knowledge. of OpenNMS. That means the, the person that implements the plugin doesn't need to know how the inner works of OpenNMS are. The second one was we wanted it simple. And the third one, we wanted to have it as a plugin. Um, in technical terms, this means it's an OSGI plugin that can be um, activated by a carafe in and in, in yeah, running OpenNMS system. Okay, this is all now a little bit theoretical, but I want to show you this now um, a little bit, a little bit more from a practical side in the code. Let's go. All right, let's get started. What we will do is we take an existing plugin, copy it, and then adapt the code. I think that's the easiest way to um, get started because it gives you already the structure um, and tells you how the plugin should look like. So we, I went on GitHub, picked one of our plugins, copy the, uh, the Git URL, and let's clone it. Give it a name came up with a good name of plugin, and here we go. Now that we have the code, the next thing is to open it in an IDE of your choice. I will pick IntelliJ for now. All right, so we have the code here now open. Let's take a look. See, there's not much. We have basically this class here. Um, and what I'm going to do now is um, I will erase the old code so we can implement it together and you see what is needed to get this plugin running. 
So you see that it implements the time series storage. And this is the heart of the integration, basically. Um, so it has a handful of methods you need to implement uh, in order to hook up to OpenNMS on one side and then implement whatever is needed to hook up to your um, time series database. What you will see is that there is no interna of OpenNMS needed to implement this interface. That's what we will do now together. Let's start with the data storage. Let's add a, um, a concurrent hash map to store the data. I guess we, we store by metric and then have a collection of, um, of samples. Let's call it data. Make it a concurrent hash map. And this is where we hold the data. For now. I mean, this is not obviously not for production, but this is just for the sample here. Maybe make this here private. The first method we'll implement is the store method. And it is therefore that you get um, a list of samples and store them in your time series database. Now, what is a list of samples? A sample consists of um, three things. This is one, the metric, the time, and the data point. So basically, it's a, it's a data point for a given time for a given metric. Very simple. So I guess we um, we just iterate over that list and store it. So let's first get the get the right data bucket. Key is the metric, and then if it's not there, let's create it. Here we go. So, and then this here is a collection of samples. Okay, and done. So we implemented this now, and you see, I didn't have to know anything about OpenNMS here. Um, we just take this list of samples and do something with them according to whatever um, time series database we want to connect to. All right, the next method we want to take a look at is the getMetrics method. We, we're getting a set of tags, and we give back all metrics that contain those tags. Very simple. A metric is basically just um, consists of a bunch of tags. That's all a metric is. Um, so we need a filter by those tags. I don't want to bore you with the actual implementation. I copy this and put it here now. So basically, we just um, iterate over all the metrics and filter them by the tags. Next is the get time series method. What we get is a time series fetch request, and we give a list of samples back. This is the method where OpenNMS queries the actual data back from the time series database. So this time series fetch request consists of the metric that we want to retrieve, a start point and an end point. So we only want the data between those um, points in time. Then um, we get a duration, which which just works together with the aggregation. So basically, we can either aggregate ourselves, or we can aggregate in OpenNMS. So this is the standard that OpenNMS aggregates. But for performance optimization, also the plugin can aggregate, and therefore it needs the the step, and it needs the aggregation type. Um, for for here, I won't go into details there because the standard is that OpenNMS does that. 
So if we go back, I prepared again the implementation. If we here take a look, in the end here it just does um, a check because we don't do any application in this implementation. Um, and then it filters the data by the parameters we, we just um, looked at. And that's it, very simple. And the last one is the delete method. It removes all or deletes all data associated with that metric. In our case, it's a very simple implementation. We just say data.remove and give it the metric. And we're done. So here you see we have, with a few lines of code, we're not on, not even 100 lines of code, we have a full implementation of um, a data storage, a time series data storage. Of course, if you connect to a real um, time series database, you probably will end up with a few more lines of code, but not that many more. Now that we finished the plugin, let's um, build and install it so that we can use it in OpenNMS. So therefore we go into the plugin folder and uh, do a maven install. So this will build it now and put it into the um, maven directory. And we're done. And now we can use it in OpenNMS. Next thing we need to do is to activate the um, integration layer. Um, that we do by um, editing the uh, OpenNMS properties file, which is an etc. Oops. Here we go. And here, if you search for time series, you'll find this entry here. Um, let's uncomment that. And you see right now that standard is our defaults. You can also um, enable nudes, or for our purpose, we use the integration layer. Let's do that and save it. And then we can restart OpenNMS. Now we restart OpenNMS. The last thing we need to do now is to tell OpenNMS to use our plugin. Therefore, we log into the Caraf shell. And um, we install our plugin. We do this with the bundle install. And now we can check if it's um, really there. And we see it's active. So we're good. Now let's take a look at OpenNMS itself and see if it actually worked. Let's take a look. We go to report resource graphs. Um, and we see if we have some data. And something is showing up here. This is for 24 hours. Let's do this. The last two hours. Here, we see some data. So this is a good sign. Let's see if it actually comes from our plugin. So if we go into our plugin, we put here a breakpoint. And then let's see if we run into there. And here we are. So it's actually calling our plugin and taking the data from there. So if you look into our hash map we implemented earlier, you'll see there is lots of um, data in there that's stored there. And it's trying to retrieve that now again. So that means we're done with our plugin implementation. As you can see, with a few lines of code, we added um, a new time series integration to OpenNMS. Thanks for watching. Cheers from the DevGem 2020.